fantasy and adventure. On this program, I'll show you how to improve your three-dimensional drawings by using the special art word, color. I'll be drawing a simple table and coloring it just like you see on the Secret City logo. Then later, when we go to the Secret City mural, I'll color in parts of the moonscape. Meta Man and two Secret City Club members, Tim Flynn and Sharon Kim, are here today, and they're doing a creative drawing challenge, one I'm sure all of you want to, will want to do, too. Now, I know you how much you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, so I'll tell you how easy it is to join. Now, here's what you need to follow along today. You need your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, your activity notebook, so you can participate in the Creative Drawing Challenge. Now, you gather those materials together, and I'll be right back. So you all revved up, right? And you're ready to become king of that flat piece of paper right in front of you. You have your paper out. And we're going to draw three-dimensional drawings using all seven magic words, plus that special art word today, which is color. It's the most important art word to learn because almost every artist uses color. And you can see color all around you. It's in your clothing. It's in your house, on the furniture, and on the carpeting. It's also in your backyard and the plants and the trees. It's just about everywhere you look. There's lots of color. Now, when you use color, it's important to learn how to put them together in the, well, either the correct way by using the scientific approach or the color will, and I'll talk about that later, or the intuitive approach. I'll tell you a little bit about that later, too. Let's start, get your hands warmed up, make sure you're loosened up, ready to blast across this piece of paper. We'll put our two dots for the simple table, two dots straight across from each other. Put your finger in the middle, right here, see? A dot above your finger, a dot below your finger, all right, move your finger. Now, take aim between the dots. <laughs> okay, that always gets me all revved up. <laughs> Make sure you have a nice foreshortened square, and later on we'll add color to this drawing. We'll just draw that simple table. You know how to draw this, no problem at all, right? You've been practicing this. You can probably draw this in 30 seconds. Middle line's a bit longer. Slant this right here. Direction one and direction seven. All right, now come in halfway. Straight down the right side. Straight down the left side. And make sure you extend this middle line just a wee bit longer than the two sides. Direction one, direction seven. Now the fun part comes when we start adding color to our drawing. Now I told you there's different approaches to using color. It's a real scientific approach, which is using a color wheel and trying to figure out exactly what colors will combine together to make the the best reaction for your eye. See, coloring your drawings is like icing a cake. It makes drawing a little more tasty for your eye to look at. It spices it up, it flavors it up. See, I'm drawing walls behind the simple table. There's a direction seven line. I drew a direction seven line, not from the corner, but a bit above the corner. And then you draw the thickness on the walls. See, this is direction seven. And then we'll draw the corner of the room. You can create the illusion you're in a room real easily just by drawing a line up from the back of the simple table. Would you like to draw a hallway back behind this wall so a mouse can come out here and run around the table a couple of times and get some cheese and run off the paper? You want to put a little hallway? Well, it's real easy. All you need to do, there's the wall, and move up from the corner and come out here in direction one. See, not from the corner, but a little above the corner. And then draw a vertical line, a line in direction seven. See how it lines up? make this a little bit longer so it does line up and then a vertical line follow the sides of your paper you can draw a hallway over here too by direction seven direction seven a vertical line and then direction one I line this up with my pencil make sure it matches direction one and then you have two hallways next to your simple table now you can use color to shade you can use color to add a tone to your drawing I'll use the same colors we use on this the logo which happen to be the primary colors. Now the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, just like I have on my commander markers right here. These are the primary colors. And to show you 
the colors. I have my little color wheel. Now take a look at this. Here's the primary colors. Here's red, and here's yellow, and here's blue. Now the complementary colors are the colors that are opposite of these primary colors on this color wheel. Now these are really easy to get. Your teacher probably has one, or you can get one at a, an art store for probably less than a dollar. But this blue right here, the complementary color is right opposite. See the orange over here? This is a complementary color. Here's green, and the complementary color of green is red. These are opposites of each other. Now if you mix these together, it turns out gray, so you don't want to mix those together unless you want a gray. Now let's use a light red to color the top of the simple table. See a very light red. And then I'll add a light red to the ground surface around the walls. Really light. And later on you can take your finger, you can blend these in if you want to. And then we'll take our blue and add blue. I'll look at my Secret City button here. And blue is on the left side. So I'll add blue to the left side, almost like a, a shaded. Well, that's almost too light. I'll use a darker blue. Use my dark blue stick here and go through. And push hard on it. Okay, and later on, see, I'm using pastels right here. I'm using chalk. And later on, I'll go through with my pencil or my finger and I'll blend these in so it gives a smoother tone. And then on my button, yellow's on the right side, so I'll use the primary color yellow and get a nice and yellow. It's almost reflective because, see, the sun has a direct hit right here on the right side. Nice combination of colors. And you know if you mix these colors, if you mix the primary colors, you mix yellow and you mix blue, you get green, right? And if you mix red and you mix blue, you get violet. If you take blue and yellow, you get green. See, that's how you get the secondary colors. You can mix them together, or a lot of things, a lot of chalk, or a lot of paint has those combinations already made for you. I'll add yellow here to the right sides of my walls. Now, if you have crowns, you can join in with me. Now, get out your activity notebook and your pencil, because Metaman has a really exciting, creative challenge for you to follow along with. Today, we have club members Sharon Kim, and Tim Flynn to help us with our creative challenge. Sharon and Tim, what do I have in my hands? A basketball. A beach ball. A beach, beach ball or a basketball. A large size ball. Now you know it's a ball by the shape of my hands. My hands tell you what it is. What do we call that when I create something out of space? Pantomime. Pantomime. And you can decide the color of this ball and maybe the designs of it. Today, I am going to show you a contraption out of pantomime. And I want you to draw it the best way you can. It will have all sorts of gizmos and whatchamacallits on it. And decide what it looks like and put that down on paper. Now, Sharon and Tim, I want you to help out with this. And a little bit later on, you can share your ideas with us. Ready? Ready. Ready out there? Get your pad and pencils and watch my contraption. Tim, we'll come back to you later and you can share with us your ideas of my contraption.
I wonder what Sharon and Tim are going to create. I wonder what you're going to create. We'll take a look in a little while. Now, I want to go back to color using primary colors, using opposite colors or secondary colors, and also using analogous colors. You think of an alligator when you say analogous colors. That's a tough word. And they're colors that really go well together, like brothers and sisters on the color wheel. See, the color wheel is really helpful when you're using the scientific approach. Analogous colors are colors that go well together. Red and blue go well together. They're next to each other, and they make all these nice combinations. Red and orange are very, very compatible colors. They're analogous colors. And yellow and green make this is my favorite color right here, yellow, green. Favorite color in the whole world. And this one right here is analogous colors. And we'll use some of those when we get to the Secret City mural. I think I'll stick with the primary colors with this drawing right here. And I'm sure in your crown box you have the primary colors that you can follow along with me. Draw the window right here. And then draw the window right here, direction 7 and direction 7. And then direction one, draw the thickness of the window. Direction seven, then draw the thickness of the window. And then take your crown and go ahead and draw or color the right side of all your walls and all the sides of the buildings and the right sides of any niches or crannies that you make into your drawing. And even the right side of the window seal here, make that yellow. And then make the top seals red, match the simple table here. These are the primary colors. These are the three most important colors that you use because you, can, you can't make these by combining other colors. And then we'll use blue on the right side. Blue there, blue here, blue back here. Isn't it fun to use color? See how nice it looks when you, and then later on, so you blend it together with your finger and it makes it look like a nice, neat drawing. And then later, we'll blend it in. Now draw, 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 practice your drawing. 20 or 30 minutes a day, and the super important artwork to keep in your mind, the real important one, is color. hyped up when you pick up your pencil and you start to draw? Is that your favorite time of the day when you start to draw? Well, if it is, I have a special club designed just for you and you should join. It's called the Secret City Club. So each week I have a special drawing I want you to complete. And as soon as you're finished with it, you put it in an envelope and you mail it in to me and I'll make you an automatic member of the super cool Elite Secret City Club. Now I want to make this club more popular than, than pizza. So send in your drawings right away. This week's drawing is to complete your two-headed creature for your moonscape or your planet. Take a look at this one done by Betsy Jablonski. This is her creature that she designed. Now you design your own two-headed creature and you mail it into the Secret City Club Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94556. I'm really interested in seeing what our club members have created for my, cre uh, my contraption. Tim, let me see your drawing. Can you describe that to me? This is the lower part of your computer. I named it Hal. Hal. And here, we started with the two wheels, the big one and the little one. This controls most of the computerized information. And here, we came to the typing where you typed in your information. Here, it's loaded onto a uh, discus that's recorded into the memory. Here is the second computer where you type in the rest of your information and it relates to you what you have just wrote in case you made a mistake. And here's where you store your memory. Memory, memory tape one, two, and three. And you push these in to record.
push all three of these in to record what you typed in here and here. That's really interesting. Now, Sharon, why don't you explain to me the top of the contraption? Okay, well, my entrance is a little different, but after you um, push forward the levers and you pull the rope, then the ladder comes up. So you climb up the ladder to a little catwalk and you get to the morpho lift then all you do is you hold on to this thing and it lifts you up and you get to the vomit comet and it sort of wiggles you around and then after that you get to a little pump which you sort of lift weights. I see. Well, that's really interesting. Now I have another creative challenge for you guys. I would like for you to create another drawing that shows what this contraption can do. What it creates or what happens when it's being used. Okay? Put the pads back and let's get to work. That's imagination at work, huh? What does your contraption look like? Are you following along? Well, you can finish it up later on. I want to show you some, some more drawings, some radical drawings that are in the Secret City Gallery today. Now, our guest today from the Secret City Club is Tim Flynn, so I put one of his drawings up here. And notice how he uses color. Red, green, yellow, Nice combination. He made a transportation system uh, on the planet, a bridge between a, a little canyon or a crevice. Really nice use of color and used a ruler to draw that grid. I like that pattern. Take a look at another drawing. This is